Welcome back to Seneschal, everyone. Today I'll be going over the Sisters of Battle Index and my thoughts on the models and the army as a whole. Uh, for the first video, we'll cover the HQ and troop choices, and at the very end, talk about the Sister-specific traits, strategies, and relics from uh, Chapter Approved 2017. First, we'll start with the easiest model to talk about, Celestine. Uh, Celestine is simply the best model in the index. 200 points by herself, accurate in melee, strength 7, AP minus 3, 2 damage, means she's really good at clearing infantry, pretty good at killing uh, opposing characters, and not terrible against uh, heavier vehicles and monsters, even if that isn't her forte. Uh, she brings a 2-up armor, 4-up invul. Her mobility is incredible due to her automatic act of faith, allowing her to double move anytime she needs to, which allows her 24 inches of movement before her charge distance. Uh, if you are still dug into melee, the passion act of faith often allows her to kill whatever she's still engaged with at the beginning of your turn, and move and charge later that turn. I personally believe you always pay the 50 points for a 2 Gemini, as the added survivability of those extra 4 wounds often makes people shy away of even attempting to kill her at all. Also, her adding 1 to the Shield of Faith and Vulnerable save for sisters models within 6 inches can allow your oppressors to weather the storm if you don't get to go first, and of course she stands back up on a 2 plus once per game, meaning that even if she isn't the toughest model around, the fact your opponent will generally have to kill her twice is incredible. All around, she's a fantastic model for both her damage output and defensive buffs, essentially an auto-include in any Sisters of Battle army, in my opinion. Second is the Canonist, the only other HQ choice that we have access to. I have to say the Canonist is an incredible model for the points, especially if you give her an Inferno Pistol and the Blade of Admonition from Chapter Approved 2017, assuming you're running Pure Sisters. Hitting on twos, rerolling one, strength five, three damage with AP minus three and melee is just incredible for a model that costs 61 points with a 3-up armor, 4-up inroll, and 5 wounds. She's no smash captain, but in a brigade where you are already going to take 2 canonesses, you can leave 1 stock at 45 points in your fire to provide rerolls, and have more melee focus 1 run up the table behind your more aggressive models to support uh, with her reroll bubble. Have a model who's there to help remove even heavier infantry uh, without too much difficulty. I think the one thing she suffers from is that unlike a Smash Captain or another Captain model from a different Space Marine chapter or Chaos Marine chapter, she doesn't have any ability to get a jump pack or a bike or anything like that, uh, which would allow her to keep up with your Dominion, Seraphim, and Celestine. Uh, that being said, her, her value for her points is especially notable when she's only 7 points more expensive than, say, a Mistress of her pens. Uh, the Canis will do more damage, is more survivable, and also provides more generally useful rerolls than the mistress. All in all, though, Canonist is a model that has grown on me over the course of 8th edition and continues to prove her value in each of my lists. Uh, today, we'll also be looking at the only troop choice for the Sisters of Battle, the aptly named Battle Sister Squad. They are cheaper than previous editions at 9 points a model, 3 up armor, 6 up in foam, which is nice, and they do benefit from objective secured. That being said, I seldom find myself equipping them with anything more than their stock let out. They are mostly used for screening the firebase of retributors and running onto objectives. They are as survival as any other basic infantry choice, and will mostly stay in cover and just throw bolter fire towards any models that stray too close. Uh, the issue I see with Battle Sisters comes down to a matter of volume. They can take a couple special weapons or a special weapon and heavy weapon per squad, whether you get a five rail squad or the maximum 15. So taking a large Battle Sister squad is often more of a narrative thing I do uh, than anything for a competitive list. While your Dominions have access to more special weapons, and your Retributors have more access to heavy weapons, the Battle Sisters are a nice middle ground, uh, but unlike 7th edition, when I would run just a ton of multiple small unit Battle Sisters and emulators to make the make the most of that single fire point the Transport had at the time, this edition they don't really have the range to be a firebase type model and don't have something to make them shine moving up the table following the Vanguard. Uh, the one thing you can really load them up for cheap for volume support fire at mid-range is Storm Bolters. Uh, you can put three Storm Bolters in the squad since the Scar Drink can take one as well. That's only six points. Uh, so you're looking at 51 points for a whole squad with two Bolt Guns and three Storm Bolters, and that's pretty solid. I know I may sound a little bit negative about this squad, especially compared to my feelings about Celestine and the Canonist, but really, Battle Sisters are fine. Uh, it's just that. They don't wow me. Uh, they don't feel truly underwhelming. You take them to fill out your detachments. They do a nice job screening. They can throw some extra shots out there. And with a 2-up armor save, they're not super easy to remove by a lot of the standard anti-infantry options people are bringing to clear that guard blob or any of the other normal screening units. 
So I feel like they are about where they should be, unless GW wants to see them in a different role, and they might. So we'll see what happens with uh, Chapter Approved 2018. The Index for Sisters of Battle was improved upon, I would say, by the Chapter Approved 2017, because that brought us the first sister-specific warlord trait, their relic, and the two stratagems. The warlord trait's inspiring order. This trait allows Adeptus Sororitas units within six inches to reroll failed morale tests. Well, I think this is a very fluffy and sensible trait. When you compare it to the big rulebook traits, I think you're going to make Celestine your warlord, and I think you're going to give her a legendary fighter the vast majority of the time. You could make an argument for going with the six-up feel no pain for her, but I really, I want to maximize her damage in close combat, and my goal is that she's charging every turn. The Blade of Mad Admonition is the relic we got. It's fantastic. It's a relic power sword. Your cannoness goes from her chain sword at strength 3, no AP, to strength 5, AP minus 3, and 3 flat damage. Even if you need 5s to wounds on, on something tougher, your opponent doesn't really want to risk having too many AP minus 3 attacks with 3 damage coming their way. Uh, just a fantastic relic to allow you to create a melee cannoness that's still hitting on 2s rerolling 1s as compared to like the Eviscerator, which has the minus 1 to hit and is more expensive, and will make your opponent think twice about engaging her melee if they don't think they can kill her first thing. The first stratagem that we got was Martyrdom. It's 1 CP if a Sororitas character is slain on a 2-up, and you can perform an act of faith at the end of the phase. This can be incredible. Uh, if a Cannonus or a Magifier dies, let Celestine swing again. Let a unit of Dominions fire four Meltaguns, or Retribute or send a volley of uh, four Heavy Bolters into somebody. This will most often be done on your opponent's turn, because typically that's where your characters are going to die, and they're probably not really planning on that sudden burst of damage. Especially if you do it when they kill somebody in the psychic phase. Like, take out that Amagifier, take out that Cannonus, and then all of a sudden they're, they're taking a volley of some serious damage, probably. Um, I honestly don't use this as much as I should. Uh, it may be something where putting a character just slightly closer to an enemy unit may be worthwhile if the units they're supporting are weakened or dead, um, just to see if the opponent takes the bait. Lastly, we have the Purity of Faith. Uh, also 1 CP, when an opponent manifests a psychic power uh, within 24 inches of a Sororitas model, on a 4-up, deny it. <laughs> That's amazing. Even with only the 50% chance before rerolls, it's worth it. You have to pick your power that you wanted to stop, but something like a warp time is so good. I mean, catalyst sometimes. You know, people plan on those powers being there, especially against an army that has no psychers. So being able to just drop that on them all of a sudden can really throw them for a loop. Now, chapter approved was certainly good to sisters. I really love three out of the four new elements. So looking forward to what 2018 brings. Those are my thoughts on the HQ and troop choices and uh, the chapter approved 2017 editions for the Sisters of Battle Index. Let me know what you think. Agree or disagree? Uh, tell me in the comments section. Like and subscribe if you'd like to see more of the series as it comes out. Thank you, and Ave Imperator.